Here we're going to be looking at a consolidated statement of cash flows for an influential investment. Now an influential investment is where uh, one company goes out and buys 20 to 50 percent ownership in another company. And we're going to be specifically looking at reporting this equity income on a consolidated statement of cash flows for this influential investment. Again, the 20 to 50 percent ownership in another company here. So let's look at our example here. Corporation P purchases 30 percent here of corporate Corporation C's common stock for $230,000. And for example, here we're going to use uh, based on 11x1 date here. And that's considered an influential investment here, this 20 to 50% ownership since they purchased 30% here. So for Corporation C, at the time here, they have shareholders' equity, that would be their common stock plus the retained earnings of $700,000. And Corporation C had net income for the year here of 20x1 of $80,000 thousand dollars and Corp C also paid a dividend here dividend of twenty five thousand for the year. So let's go down and make our calculations calculations. So Corporation P buys thirty percent here of the common stock of Corporation C. So based on that two hundred and thirty thousand dollar investment that they made here in the common stock, uh, doing your arithmetic here, two hundred thirty thousand divided by thirty percent gives an implied fair value here of Corporation C of seven hundred and sixty six thousand six hundred dollars. Now. Uh, just looking at our distribution schedule here, and I'm just going to use it as a subsidiary here, Corporation C. So let's uh, determine what our distribution schedule would be here. So uh, Corporation P bought 30% here for $230,000. So the fair value here of Corporation C, uh, the implied fair value would be $766,600, which we calculated up here. And then the non-controlling interest would get 70% here, 53666. But what I'm using this distribution schedule for here is to determine this excess of the fair value over the book value. So in this example here, uh, a corporation C's uh, book value acquired here, it would put it all into common stock at $700,000. So their total equity, uh, corporation C, was $700,000. Now the fair value that we determined here for corporation C was $766,600. Taking the difference here uh, between the total equity and the fair value, we come up with an excess of the fair value over the book value here of $66,600. And that's why we set up this determination and distribution schedule here to determine this excess of the fair value over the book value. Now for this example, this total excess of the fair value over the book value was assigned uh, to some equipment adjustment. The equipment was adjusted up to its fair value here of $66,600. And this is for uh, the adjustments of our identifiable, or identifiable accounts here from Corporation C's balance sheet here. And also the equipment here we're going to use for example had a 10 year life. So our amortization amount here was $6,600 per year here. Now that's just based on this excess of the fair value over the book value. So we're amortizing that $66,600 over 10 years or we're adjusting it for the amortization at $6,600 per year. So now we can go on to look at how we'd be reporting this equity income on the consolidated statement of cash flows. Okay, now let's look at reporting this equity income on a consolidated statement of cash flows. Again, it's for this influential investment from 20 to 50 percent ownership. And in this case, we're working with uh, Corporation P here buying a 30 percent ownership in Corporation C here. So let's look at our consolidated statement of cash flows here. And this is just an example here for Corporation P. And this would be at the end of the year 1231X1. So they purchased Corporation C here on one. 1x1 and this is for the end of the year the 1231x1 date. So we're, all we're going to be looking at here is a consolidated statement of cash flows and we're just going to be looking at the operating activities here and we're using the indirect method here for the uh, consolidated statement of cash flows. So we have to adjust the net income here 
to the net cash basis here. And what we're going to be looking at here is this equity income here for Corporation C, and it's going to be the excess of the dividends here. And we're going to look at how we calculate that and record it here. So first, this equity income from the 30% investment in Corporation C provides funds only to the extent of the dividends received here. The excess equity income must be deducted from the consolidated net income in determining the funds provided by net income. Income. So going back to our income state, our consolidated income, our statement of cash flows here, we're going to be subtracting out this equity income here. But this is what we have to calculate here. So let's go down and look at our calculations here. So we had ownership. 30% here, and the net income for the corporation C here uh, was $80,000 per year, and corporation P here had a 30% ownership, so they would receive $24,000 here. Now we have to uh, subtract out this amortization of excess. In this case, let's go down to our amortization schedule here. So we had uh, our amortization amount here of $6,600 per year. And since Corporation P here had a 30% ownership, they would get $2,000 dollars worth of that amortization here. So uh, looking at our amortization here of the excess, the 30% of it, we would be subtracting that $2,000 amortization, dollar amortization amount from the uh, percent here of net income that they would have received. So our equity income here, taking the difference here from the amortization, subtract that from the ownership for the net income that they received for, year, for the year here, we have a $22,000 equity income here for corporate. P. And now we have to subtract out the dividends received here. And in this case, Corporation C paid a $25,000 dividend for the year. Corporation P would get 30% of that. So that equals $7,500 here. So subtracting that, uh, dividends received from the equity income here gives us non-cash income of $14,500 per year here. So let's go up to our amortization or to our cash flow statement here and consolidate cash flow statement. So this equity income here, Corporation C, in excess of the div dividend of $14,500 has to be subtracted out here from uh, con the consolidated net income here to recognize reconcile this net income to a net cash basis here. So here's the $14,500 here that we subtracted that out. And that we can go back here and then look again what that was here. We can, the equity income of a 30% investment in Corporation C provides funds only to the extent of the dividends received here. The excess equity income must be deducted from the consolidated net income and determining the funds provided by net income. And that's what we've done here. We've made our calculations and then we subtracted out this non-cash income here of $14,500.